So first of all, we need to actually get the current velocity. And to do that, we're going to use the controller object that's being passed to us. Now, one of the parts of the controller, you can have to take my word for it, is this collection called actuators. That's a uh, lowercase actuators. Okay, so it's basically a list of the actuators which have been assigned to this controller. And in this case, it's going to be this controller here, the up controller, as an update. And we can see that it's attached to one actuator. So we need to get the first item in the actuators list. If you don't know how to do this or what I'm doing here, have a look at my tutorial on object types in Python. Make sure you save at regular intervals. Blender is still in beta. Now, so we've got um, we've gotten the first actuator, and it has a property called dlock, lowercase d, uppercase l, dlock, and that's going to be the actual velocity of the car. And we we're also going to assign this to velocity, the actual main the velocity within the class eventually, so once we've actually processed it. So we can do that. So now we have the current velocity of the car. And what we want to do is actually we want to actually alter it. First off, I'm going to use I need to test. First off, I need to test whether or not the car is actually moving forward. Because if the car is stationary or moving backwards, we're actually going to, nothing's going to happen in terms of forward motion at all. So we're not actually going to slow down. We're not going to have any decrease in velocity. If the car's stationary, it's stationary. You know, we don't want it to spontaneously start rolling backwards. And if it's actually reversing, then the opposite effect is going to happen and it's actually going to, the velocity is going to increase with the reactionary force. So I need to test whether or not the car is going forward. And to do that, I use what's called an if statement. Now, if is as it is in English, it's a conditional, and it's a test word, and it's something, and it requires some sort of statement to test if it's true or false. If it's true, then the what's inside the if statement is run. If it's false, then the if statement is just passed over completely. So, we need to test if it's going forward. What does that mean? It means that the location, the velocity on the x-axis, which is a collection of values of velocity, one for each axis. So x, y, and z in that order. So if we want to get the x value for the velocity, then we use the first item in the collection. So if velocity 0 is greater than 0, so if it's moving forward, because it has to be in a, it has to be a positive value for it to be moving forward, so if it's greater than 0, then I'm going to take this value exactly, a to actuator 0 d lock equals, now this is where we use this other module here, math utils math utils dot vector and this is create an instance of a class and it has three arguments that it needs the first one is x the x value the first one's the y value the second one's a y value and the last one is a z value so we want to pass our new x value now remember this is slowing the car down so what we're actually doing in effect is subtracting a value from the current x velocity. So we're going to take that vel0, the x velocity, and we're going to subtract a very, very small value. In this case, 0 0.01, I think. Okay. And finally, once we've done that, we want to change the current velocity. Whoops. Don't forget to put self. We want to, we want to change the current velocity 
inside of this class here to whoops the x value of the actuator the x value of the velocity so now we've actually written our class but before we can actually use the class we need to create what's called an instance of it now I should have covered instances in my previous tutorial on classes so for those of you who are familiar who aren't familiar classes at least here can be considered templates and in order to actually use a template we need to create actually we need to create a sort of copy from it and then use that copy and this copy is called in programming is called an instance so we need to create an instance of the class so I'm just going to say car equals Porsche and that's going to create a new instance and assign it to car and I'm going to create another update method and again this is going to have the parameter a because that a is going to come from somewhere and what this is going to do is going to update the car with a why am I doing this just because it's nice and neat and it actually allows us to have more than one car, at least from code. So we can actually duplicate this and not have to worry about it. Okay, so I've done that. So we've done the update method there. Now what we need to do is add this into the actual logic. Because at the moment this is actually blank and will actually raise an error saying format error or something like that um, it, there's nothing it expected a string and it's gotten an empty string because there's nothing there so I'm gonna put in first of all game because that's the name of the pi file that I created game dot now it's not the class it's just this update method straight inside of it game dot update just like that no parentheses no brackets nothing just game to update now I'm gonna run it and see if I've got any errors oh I should do actually if we have a look at this line here I've only put in one argument for vector we actually need to take the y and z values of the original velocity silly me this is very simple. Vel1 and Vel2. So the y value and the z value of the velocity is going to be put straight back in. So now when we actually create the forward method, we should give, get a really nice easing off effect. And again, we're going to create another method in here called forward. Or no, not called forward accelerate it's going to take a parameter of a I'm just going to put pass in there just for now you don't need to know what pass means it just allows me to run this without any errors and we're going to create corresponding corresponding function inside of here I define accelerate self a. It's been a while since I've used Python. And in this one, again I'm going to take the velocity. So I'm just going to copy and paste that line. And there aren't going to be any if statements. It's just going to be one single line. It's going to increase by 0.02 this time instead. This is going to be my acceleration value, 0.02. And you'll notice this is twice the deceleration value or the resultant force value. So this is going to give me for every frame the car moves forward two and moves moves forward two and moves back one.
So it's, it's going to slowly increase and increase and increase and increase the difference. And that's what we want. Now changing this ratio, in this case one to, of 2 to 1, changing this ratio will affect the acceleration and the smoothness and the feel of how it accelerates. So you can have a bit of a play around with that. Right, so that's the accelerate method. Accelerate method done. So I'm going to put that, put that in here. Card up. Accelerate A. And hopefully, if everything's working, I can put that in here. Game dot accelerate. And I want to. No, I can leave that as that. So this should affect the motion. Oh, oh, stupid. A vector is a vector actually only takes one argument, not three. And that argument is a list. So we keep these exactly the same, but add square brackets to show that it's a list. Just like that. I forgot about that. That's my bad. And also if you're wondering why that's stuttering, if we go down to the keyboard controller and we down, go down to true level triggering pulse mode, and if you'll remember from my um, from my logic no tutorial, if we turn this on, it's going to it's going to it's going to actually activate this controller multiple times, and that's what we want. and the same for always as well let's have a look at that better so there you have it a very very simple way of creating this sort of creating this nice sort of fall off effect of it accelerating and slowing down when you take your finger off the up key which is very which is very similar to real life now in a real professional game what I would do is not use something like this I would use a quadratic formula to actually calculate proper values for it and to do that I would um, put in certain values like the steepness and the offset and things like that and then use a mathematical algorithm to calculate the actual quadratic formula right at the start of the game and then use this formula within the update method to process the acceleration and things but of course that's a bit more complicated and although we will be using something like it to do the turning because that's a bit more complicated than just acceleration. But as you can see here, we've nicely created a class, declared some public variables. You may be wondering why there's velocity and max velocity here. Well, for max velocity, we can add this in at any point just using a if uh, vel zero is less than max velocity Oops. like that and we can add that in to limit the speed of the car so it can't just accelerate indefinitely and the actual velocity as you can see we set it here uh, inside the update method and we're actually going to use this velocity in calculating the turning but that's for the next tutorial. So import the libraries from outside, create an instance of our class here, and we've got two functions, the functions which we're just taking straight out of our pi file, which we saved externally, called game. So game.update and game.accelerate. And these are both attached to the transmotion actuator. And both the update and forward methods pulse so they're of, they are called every frame and 
we've essentially got three controls at the moment. One which is going to actually apply the motion, one which creates a resultant force, and one which accelerates the car when the up key is pressed. Oh, sorry, before I go, I just noticed it should be self.maxvelocity.